Chapter 10, Part 2. Now we're going to look at transfer pricing, which is not bad, and flexible budgeting. I'm going to try to walk you through that one because that one's a little tricky, but it's not bad. I'm trying to lay it out for you. So transfer pricing. This, is, this occurs when within a, a, a company, two divisions uh, want to interact with each other, i.e., uh, the uh, truck division and the tire division. The truck would like to have tires from the tire division. And how do they determine what to sell? Okay, How do they determine how to cost that? That's what transfer pricing. It's when products go between two divisions in the same company. It affects operating income, return on investment, sales margin, and residual income. Optimize overall profitability by encouraging a transfer price only if the company would benefit from the exchange. So it can be priced three ways. One is market price. They just pay, uh, if the car division wants the tires, they just pay whatever anybody outside the company pays. Negotiated. Uh, that gets a little tough where they come up with a price that covers the variable and maybe the fixed cost and then adds a little profit or they can do cost which is just your variable cost or they can do cost plus a markup so these are some of the things that can happen now do the divisions operate under differing different taxing authorities such as that income tax rates are higher would the amount paid to the custo customs and duties be impacted by the transfer price? These are just some questions. So now we'll take a look at an example. So Mike has two divisions. One makes cars, one makes tires. The, the market price on the tires is 70 bucks with direct materials of 29 and conversion costs of $4. They also have fixed costs of 120, and they expect to produce 60,000 tires, averaging $2 of fixed cost per tire. If the transfer division has excess capacity, what's the lowest acceptable transfer price, and what's the highest? The lowest is the total variable cost, which is $33. The highest is the market price. Now. If the tire division has a policy of full absorption costing plus 20%, what would be the transfer price? Well, it would be the variable cost plus that average fixed cost of two bucks times $1.20, which would make it $42. If the tire division is at full capacity, what would be the fair price for the tires? It would be the market price, which is 70 bucks. Now we're going to look at flexible budgets. Now a flexible budget is a budget prepared for a different level of volume than that which was originally anticipated. The master budget variance is the difference between the actual revenues and expenses and the master budget. But you can't make that comparison because within the uh, actual and the master budget are variances that are due to different volume and variances due to other factors and you would like to really see how much of that is volume. So volume variance, it's the difference between the master budget and the flexed budget, i.e. what would the budget have looked like if the bu master budget had 100,000 units and the actual was 150,000? So what would the budget have looked like if they had actually budgeted 150,000 units? That's what that's all about. And it arises only because the actual volume differs from the volume originally anticipated in the master budget. The difference between the flexible budget and the actual results tells it if factors other than volume were affected. Underlying causes of variances, management by exception, Use performance reports to see how operational decisions affect companies' finances. Now, again, we break down that master budget, and I'm going to do the whole thing for you, between the flexible, what had to do with flexing, and what has to do with variance. So here's our original budget. Our relevant range is 50,000 to 75,000 units. Our sales volume number of cases was Budget at 55, and we actually sold 60, and these are our costs. 
So what is the budgeted sales price per unit? So what we're going to do is take the 165 and divide it by the 55 to get three bucks. What is the budgeted variable expense per unit? It would be $88, which are our variable cost, divided by 55. What is the total variance, and is it favorable or unfavorable? Well, here's our total variance. And in the end, when we break down between the volume and other variance, our total should equal $7,500. And that means we were over by $7,500. So we can tell that since we had more sales than we expected, that's favorable. Sales revenue is higher, that's favorable. Variable costs are more, that's unfavorable. Whenever your costs are higher, it's unfavorable. But in total, we're favorable. Our fixed costs are higher, so that's unfavorable. But in total, we are favorable. So now let's break down the total variance by comparing the actuals with the flex budget that is based on actual volume and the flex budget with the master budget. This is to answer the question, did we make more money due to increased volume or other reasons? Now, determining the flexible budget, comparing actuals with the flex budget. So. In order for us to come up with the flex budget, we have to take the volume at 60,000 and we have to take it times our budgeted price per sales price per unit times the actual volume. That's how we got that 180,000. 180, to get our budgeted variable cost, we're going to take our budgeted variable cost per unit times the actual volume and that's how we get the 96. And the fixed cost budgeted don't change. They're fixed. Now we can flex the budget. We're going to compare the two. And here's what we get. There was no difference. There is no difference in volume since we're using volume to determine it. Now we'll determine the flexible budgeted variance. Now, what the way we come up with that is we take the actual sales minus the flexed budget, and we're good for 5,000. And then we go through and look at the variable costs, and there, our variable costs are higher by 3,500, but our contribution margin is Still good, but our fixed costs were higher, so our total variance, though, is still positive of 500. So we can go through and look at the sales being higher than expected is favorable, but the variable cost being higher is unfavorable. The contribution margin is still positive, so that's favorable because it's higher than expected with the flex budget, and the fixed costs are unfavorable because they're higher, but we have a total of $500, and what this tells us, of the total $7,500 variance, $500 is due to other factors than volume. Now we're going to look at the volume variance. All right. Now, the sales volume variance equals the actual volume of um, 60, which is uh, the flex budget, minus the master budget, which was 55,000, which means we're, we're, we, per, we sold $5,000 more units than we expected. Now, the sales variance, the flex budget of 180,000 is higher than the master budget, so it's higher by 15,000 which is good, and the variable variance, flex, costs, and those are higher by 8, which is not good because those are costs. We never want our costs to be higher. But our total contribution margin is 7,000, and since fixed costs don't show change, we have the volume variance, which accounts for 7,000 of our total $7,500 variance, so it's because we had increased volume that we made more money. Now, sales volume is favorable. Higher sales is always favorable. Higher variable is unfavorable.
but in total we're favorable and our bottom line is favorable, which is good. Now, we then add across, and I'll give you an example. If you take that sales revenue variance of 5,000, which is favorable, plus the 15,000 variable uh, favorable volume variance, it gives you your 20,000 that was on your master budget. So what this tells us, again, is it's the volume that caused our profits to go up. And then we take the 3,500 under flexed, flexible budget variance, plus the 8,000 under volume variance, and that gives us our 11,005. So that's like a check figure because we can see that our variance, uh, our total master budget variance uh, does add up between the flexible budget variance and the volume variance. And there are our variances. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is the scoreboard and KPIs for each perspective. Now, balanced scoreboard, management must consider both. Now, this is when they go outside just the finances, all right? Uh, major shift, financial indicators are no longer the sole measure of performance, uh, but they're a big factor. I don't care what they say. So we look at the financials, but in order to get those financials, we got to look at the customer. And in order to get those financials, we got to know what's going on inside the company. And to keep those financials going, we have to learn and grow. So what do we look at from the financial perspective? How do we look to shareholders? Must continually attempt to increase profits, increase revenues, control costs, increase productivity. Now, how do we look compared to the cons uh, customer perspective? Customers concerned with four, they want price, quality, oh, sorry, let me go back. Price, quality, sales, service, and delivery time. Now, at what business process must we excel? Innovation, operations, and post-sales support. Now, can we continue to improve and create value? Three factors, employee capabilities, information systems, and companies climate for action. What's it like working in your company? Now that concludes chapter 10.